Today, I want to introduce you to an old friend of mine. In fact, not that old, only about six or seven years. Wait, that is still pretty long. Anyway, his name is Yamaha HPH MT7. <laughs> All jokes aside, these headphones mean so much more to me than just listening to sound. I bought them in early 2016 from the Yamaha store in London, Soho. If you've never seen inside the Yamaha store, it's this great big historic building with a three-story showroom. I can still remember that day. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and I felt like a kid in a candy shop. I felt like I was in a dream world with the sunlight gleaming through the windows, glistening on top of all the beautiful pianos, and I could sit down and play them all to my heart's content. And then I woke up. All the candy in this shop is so damn expensive, so I could only afford to buy these headphones. But that's okay, because to start making music in the 21st century, you really don't need to buy super expensive equipment. The more affordable equipment is already such good quality. At that time, I was renting a shared house in London, so speakers weren't really an option for me unless I really wanted to annoy my housemates. Making music, and especially mixing on headphones, is far from the ideal solution. But it's a much better starting point than not starting at all. I bought these Yamaha HPH MT7 headphones because they have a fairly neutral response and a really balanced stereo image. It's important when you're making music that your listening device doesn't colour the sound too much by adding bass or treble because you can get your music sounding really good in your own studio but then when someone else listens to the same song on their speakers or headphones, the music sounds completely different. And that's because every speaker system or pair of headphones all have their own way of treating the sound. So my job is to try to make sure that my music sounds great on all kinds of listening devices. You can still buy these headphones for around 180 US dollars or 900 yuan. And I definitely recommend them if you're a musician, but not so much if you're just a casual listener, because they really do sound very flat. In fact, for those of you who remember, I actually made Journey Lu Chung using these headphones. Oh, I've climbed the highest mountain, saw the valley from the sky, even sailed the Yangtze River from Chongqing to Old Shanghai. Just so all the sweet adventures of my life won't pass me by. Take a journey through the country where red dragons lurk inside. Most of my other works you've heard were made on these speakers behind me. They're called KRK Rocket RP5 Generation 4 Studio Monitors. These monitors are really popular amongst dance EDM producers because they've got an amazing bass response down to 43 Hz, which is incredible for such a small speaker. The bass drivers are forward facing too, which is ideal for small rooms like mine. For all you musicians out there, on the back, they've also got a graphic EQ with 25 settings, which I use alongside Sonarworks to condition them to my room. I chose these because I kept seeing the yellow cones of the KRK rockets in loads of the tutorials I was watching, and I noticed Avicii was using them too. They were actually a very special gift from my parents for my third Christmas in China. At that time, I'd just moved to Beijing, and I was very unfamiliar with everything. I didn't know anyone apart from my manager Weiping, and the environment was really unfamiliar too. That winter in Beijing was really cold, and it felt even colder because I was so lonely. So to warm the cockles of my bitterly cold heart, I bought a Christmas tree and some other Christmas decorations which really cheered me up. The speakers I got from my parents are one of the best gifts I've ever had. They carry a lot of sentimental value, but they've also been an incredibly useful tool for me to make music. I'm often working for 12 hours a day, and wearing headphones for that long, day in and day out, really hurts your ears after a while. And it can actually damage your hearing if you're not careful. Take care of your ears, guys. You only get one pair. The next set of headphones I have are probably a lot more familiar to most of you, especially if you've bought an Apple computer with a student discount in the past few years. These are my Beats Studio 3 headphones. I don't really use these for music making per se because their sound is very coloured, especially in the low end. But they're great when I'm listening to music outside in the gym or when I'm travelling because they look really cool. And they won't fall out when I'm on the treadmill. They're perfect for the treadmill actually because they're noise cancelling so they drown out all the background noise and then the other music that's usually playing in the gym. And they come with this really nice stylish carry case too which you can conveniently stow away in your luggage and of course the sound quality is 
Hempel Tor. It also comes with this little cable as well that you can use to plug in. Actually, I really wanted to thank you for getting these for me. Do you remember a little song I wrote called China Wind? Well, the music video for that song was entered into a competition on Billy Billy and I won the second prize. The prize was a Blue Yeti microphone, which you can also see behind me, and these Beats headphones. So although it's a little bit late, thank you all very much for voting. And for those of you who didn't vote, you can still support me by giving me a Sanlian. It really does help me more than you know. Finally, we have these Apple AirPod 3s. I don't usually wear these when I'm out and about walking around because I can barely see where I'm going anyway. So I can't really have my hearing impaired by music. I'll usually use them whenever I'm calling someone, while I'm in a coffee shop, or when I want to watch a video in a car. They're also very useful for mix referencing because they're one of the most popular listening devices on the market. I know so many people are gonna be listening to my songs on these earphones, so it's really important that I check all of my songs sound great on these before I publish. Sometimes you can meet the situation where a song sounds great on your speakers, but it doesn't sound as good as it should on the AirPods. So I can have a listen first and then make any adjustments if I need to. And actually, if I'm being totally honest, these aren't even mine, they're Weepings, but I occasionally steal them for a few hours. I don't think he's noticed yet. I hear that. Oops. Anyway, these aren't the most top quality products available, but they've been perfect for me. And now they hold a lot of sentimental value and they carry a lot of memories. They've been with me during key moments of my life and they've become the tools that allow me to create the music I hope you guys as much as I do. In that sense, these products have become kind of like an extension of me. Isn't it amazing how inanimate objects can play such an important role in someone's life? I'm sure you must have something that means a lot to you too. Maybe a special gift from someone, something you bought on holiday, like a pair of shoes, a bag, a watch, or anything else really. If you do, I'd love to hear your story in the comments. 